Oh, uh, guess what? It's still Monday night. Um, I have the video that you just saw uh, on Monday night posted already. Uh, I'm making dinner because we got guests tonight and they were unexpected. So I just want to spend a couple of seconds just to show you uh, what I'm making. So I have to go to the supermarket and get more um, pasta and more cheese. So I have mac and cheese with my crisp crackers um, on top, my Ritz crackers. That's gonna go in the oven. And I just breaded a whole bunch of chicken that I showed you this morning. And I'm doing it with the panko. And this is just going into, believe it or not, a mix of coconut oil and olive oil so it's going to give it a little bit of an exotic taste i got a whole bunch here to cook because um quite a few people at the table tonight i think it'll be about uh seven or eight so that's going to cook we're eating actually at eight o'clock uh, because some of the kids have curfew now if you have teenagers you know how they are right um they show up with friends at the door and you gotta come up with something at the last minute and they will empty out your fridge in one evening. Their parents are all too happy to get rid of them for the night or at least for the evening so they don't have to worry about making dinner or whatever, but I'm happy to have kids over. So that's what I'm doing. I have some um, flaky rolls. I don't know where the box is, um, but right here. Crescent rolls or what are they, grand biscuits. Then I'm gonna put in the oven, serve a salad, vegetables, and that's it. So that's really it. That's supposed to be the end of Monday's video. But I'm um, starting Tuesday's video with this. I'll see you in a bit on Tuesday for me. Sophia here from my great challenge welcome back to my channel it is day three of my staycation we are on Tuesday I think sometimes I think it's Wednesday I don't know why but I believe it's Tuesday uh, the 14th of May we are in the living room um, I'm ready to tackle the day I have to be honest I don't know how interesting this video is going to be because there's one thing I really really need to do today and it's post things up for sale <laughs> so you're gonna see the process um, how I do it um, some of you are not interested in that I'm sorry but I have to do it so instead of having a 30 second video of the rest of the day um, I'm gonna include that so I'm gonna do that this morning and then after lunch I'm gonna tackle the bathroom I have to sand the walls and paint them um, if I have time, I'll quilt. I couldn't quilt yesterday um, because, you know, it's just like I got things to do and quilting is not on my top priority, though I wish it was, but I have other things to do. Um, I want to give you an update on the floor. Um, it's working, but again, as I mentioned in the first video, you got to do it several times over several days before you can see some results. Um, it's lightening up, it's still not there, so I'm gonna continue to do it. And maybe by the end of the series, by Sunday, the floor will be back to normal. So what I'm doing is putting paper towels directly onto the floor. And I am uh, putting the um, hydrogen peroxide over the paper towel and I just let it soak overnight. So you can see here, this was all black and it's starting to lighten up. And then there's some areas where the wood is really lighting up um, or lightening up. And that's okay because I'm going to restain it anyway. Uh, so that doesn't really matter. But the big, big stain which was underneath here, let's see what it looks like. Um, it's still there, but it's not as dark. Okay, and you, again, you can see all the areas where it's getting really, really lighter. Uh, so it is lightening up the wood. It's just a very long process. I'm going to put that towel back on and add more of the hydrogen peroxide on it and I'm going to let it soak for another day and then we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like. I'm looking at the time. It's almost 11 o'clock. I've already posted um, four items and I want to show you really quick um, how I do this. I'm not going to spend a long time on the video, I just want to show you the process for one particular item. I'm going to do that probably for another three or four items, so 
by one o'clock in the afternoon I'll be done. It does take time. A lot of you have mentioned that you want to start doing this, you want to start getting rid of stuff in your house and sell them and then eventually go to the thrift shop and the flea market and the garage sales and find items that you can sell as well just to you know make an extra income. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean it's very legit. A lot of people do it very obviously. Uh, if you just look at ceramic mug, for instance, because I was um, I posted a ceramic mug, which I really like actually. But anyway, if you look at ceramic mug on um, Etsy, I think there's like 13 pages, something close to 9,000 different ceramic mugs, which tells me that maybe I need to avoid trying to sell ceramic mugs because mine aren't any better than everybody else's. I love pottery, so you know. Um, but it's signed, so that's a plus. Anyway, so you, there's a lot of people selling stuff. Um, some people sell their own items. Some people sell things that are thrifted. Some people sell things that they used to have in the house or they're selling their parents' stuff. Like I know my mother-in-law has asked me already to go and raid her basement. Lord knows she has a ton of stuff in there and to start um, selling stuff for her. And I probably will do that the next time I go to Ohio. I'm gonna go and raid the basement and bring back a ton of boxes and sell a whole bunch of stuff for her. She does have a lot of vintage stuff. I mean, like we're talking, some of it is even antique. But anyway, um, it's a legit way of making an income. Just to give you a heads up, when you sell on Etsy or eBay, you do have to pay taxes. It is taxable income. At item for eBay's item number 200 or four thousand dollars worth of uh, income then you need to get then they send you the uh, w9 and um, all the tax paperwork but generally speaking whenever you do an income you got to you know claim it um, especially if you're going to advertise out there on YouTube or the internet in general because um, not everybody's on your site okay there's always gonna be this person who just can't be happy for your success and has to try to um, bring you down but not this gal here because I'm prepared okay so we are claiming taxes just because some people have asked um, so what you do, you got to get the item first, right? So you go to the thrift, the thrift shop, you go to your garage sale, you go to um, your curio cabinet, whatever, you or you find it up the street. Small items, big items, doesn't matter. Big, big, big items generally are not really for Etsy. Um, it's mostly for decorative knickknacks and small things. If you have like a ginormous sewing machine, you can put it there as well, but understand that not everybody is gonna be willing to pay $200 in shipping. Just saying, you know, I think those things are better off with local pickup or uh, eBay maybe on auction. I'm just saying. Um, I see Etsy more for little stuff and lots of vintage stuff. So you get your item first, then you gotta clean it. So I'm gonna do that. Um, and I'm gonna start with something small just to show you and then you gotta take pictures of it and you gotta take pictures in every angle the front the back the side the top the bottom you gotta show the label if there is damage you gotta show cracks uh, chips fading if it's an item that's painted and some of the paint is gone at some point in an area you gotta show that you gotta be very transparent as to the uh, condition of the item but to take your pictures you need good lighting and preferably no distracting background. So don't put a little knickknack on top of a floral pattern, for instance. So what I have here, I'm in the kitchen. This is by far the best corner for me to film. Um, you can tell, right? Because my face kind of looks okay. Um, but it's also the best spot for me to take pictures because I have a skylight, whoops, right here. I have the light coming from this side right here. I have the light coming from the back and I'm adding one of my umbrella light. You don't have to have an umbrella light. You can have a regular light. The reason why I'm using this is because it also has a diffuser and what it does is that it counter um, balance the light that's coming from this side. And I have a piece of white paper which I tape on the counter, okay? It's a roll. Um, I can't remember where I got it. I'm pretty sure I got it for free. Yes, I did at uh, in um, Tubby's garage. <laughs> um, so you just make, you know, kind of like a um, a background, you know, with the round, try to not have any wrinkles or whatever. And you're just going to bring your items there and take pictures with a good camera. Um, I'm using my cell phone. It works. So let me show you the first item I'm going to put up for demo. 
So here's my first item. I found those three little darling musical jazz playing cat ceramics at a garage sale um, last weekend and I paid 75 cents for all three. That's right, they were 25 cents each and I just couldn't believe them. Uh, they're adorable and I'm looking at them as you have collectors of figurines, you have collectors of cats, you have collectors of jazz, you have all sorts of collectors who would be interested in that. Now, they also have the stickers. It says FF Japan and each one of them has its little sticker. So I just washed them and was very careful not to wet the sticker because you want to make sure the stickers stay there. Okay, they are vintage. Um, it is copyrighted, which tells me that this is probably from um, post 60s probably 70s ff is fitz and floyd by the way um so it's fitz and floyd but made in japan they are in excellent condition there's not a chip a crack a fading nothing and it is basically a little cat orchestra and they are just adorable um i'm looking at this one it does have just a tiny little chip here and i'll have to mention that so i'm going to take pictures of them uh like this the back all you know sides including the stickers and then i'll show you how to post them on etsy so packaging is very important you don't want stuff to break um that gives you bad reviews and then people don't come back to your shop okay so what i'm doing is that i'm individually wrapping every single one in bubble wrap but you see this this is a uh, ceram wrap and what i do is that i just roll it in the ceram wrap and I pretty much do everything that way for any of my items because that's keeping it together nobody likes to have that um, tape on the bubble wrap you gotta cut it people want to open the stuff as soon as they see it right and that's pretty much easier and it holds it together then I find an appropriate size box for my items okay and if I want to I can add a little bit of packing material just to hold them in place they are very very well wrapped so I'm not worried about anything just um, close it now this is a box that I'm reusing I'm finding boxes all over the place what I do is that I remove the label from the person who had previously received um, this box and then I'll wrap it in the brown craft paper at a little time when it's ready to ship. So let me just pack this, tape it, and then I have to weigh it and measure it. By the way, you don't want to forget to measure your item, okay, because that's going to have to go in the description. So I'm in the kitchen. This is my kitchen scale and basically I turn it on and I put my box over it and it's telling me it is not even a pound okay it's 15 point something so what I'm gonna do is put it at one pound one ounce um, just a little bit because I'm gonna wrap it with paper later on and then I have to measure the box and this is uh, let's say 14 by nine and a half by three and a half so I put 14 by nine and a half by four and a half and I write down on it, Jazz Cats. Because this is going to go in my garage on the shelf waiting for somebody to purchase it and ship it. So all of the information that I need is here. I have the weight right here. The weight, the dimension and what it is. So let's go ahead and post it on Etsy. So I know that some of you are not technology savvy and I'm talking to you, <laughs> okay? Those of you who are technology savvy, you probably don't care about that, but I wanna make sure that I get a chance for everybody to do this. So I'm gonna show you the process. How do you get your pictures on your computer? Well, first of all, you can post things through your phone. That's if you're technology savvy. If you're not, you're probably gonna do it on your computer. So what I do is that hopefully you have a Facebook account, okay? And what I do is that I post the pictures on my Facebook page, but as a only me um, feature. So instead of posting it public or to friends only, I only post it to myself. And the reason why I do that is because um, I don't want everybody to see my stuff. So I just pick the photos and I'm just going to add them. So here are the pictures that I picked, right? 
So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're allowed to add 10 pictures on um, Etsy. So I'm just going ahead and I am posting that on my Facebook. I'm going to my Facebook and I am going to search for the pictures I just posted. They're right here. And I'm going to open them and save them on my desktop. So that way I have them ready for upload. For Etsy and I don't know if you can tell but I took pictures of the bottom part pick close-ups of their faces and then the close-up of the area uh, you can't see that has the little bit of a uh, chip okay and I think that's it all right I don't need to scan them because they're coming from me so what I'm doing is I'm going to add a listing all right you need to set up a Etsy shop you need a PayPal account that's easy you just follow the prompts that's attached to your bank account basically and then I'm looking for the pictures so here's one add a photo uh, here's another one you can do 10 pictures here's another one all the pictures are here now what I want is pictures in a particular order so the one that's like um, right here where you see just the bottom of it I'm gonna put it towards the end okay because people want to see the items first. Okay, so that's it. All right, here's my thumbnail um, right here. You can click on adjust thumbnail. It would allow you to move the picture, center it a little bit more or make it bigger if you wanted to. Okay, but this one, they fit right in. So I'm going to keep it that way. All right, we're not touching that. Okay, so now I'm going to do the title and the title is going to be vintage. VTG, everybody knows what vintage is. Okay, vintage FF Japan musical jazz ceramic cats set of three in parenthesis, right? And I'm going to put Fitz and Floyd. Okay, on it. All right, then who made the item? Another company. What is it? A finished product. When was it made? 70s. I did research on that already. Category. We're going to put it into figurines and knickknacks. Um, and I'm going to add cat to it. And it's going to go to figurines and knickknacks into cat figurines. Primary color. I hope I'm not going too fast. It's white. Secondary color, color is gray. Okay. Choose a holiday or an occasion, doesn't need that. So yeah, so there's a fee for posting on Etsy. The fee is 20 cents uh, per listing, and then it renews within a few months. So it's, uh, I think it's five months or six months. Um, and then there's another fee, you pay taxes on it, and then there's the 10% that they take. So you gotta make sure you calculate about 11% uh, of the item of your profit goes to um, Etsy. So now I'm going to write the narrative for it. Um, this is not the J. Peterman catalog. We don't have to get like crazy with drama and color in the text, but you do want to make it a little appealing. Okay. I'm not just going to say a set of three ceramic cats playing music. Okay. You want to say something like, um, these cute little fellows, um, are ceramic made in Japan for Fitz and Floyd in the seventies. Uh, each one plays an instrument at a part of a jazz band. There's a cello, a guitar and a saxophone player. They are in excellent condition. There is one tiny chip, you know, you want to describe. And then of course measurements. So these guys were three inches approximately by two inches. So you want to add that. Um, so let me do that and I'll be right back. So when I'm done right now, you get uh, to add more things. I have a section here, which section I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it into um, decorative items. Okay, these sections I created myself and you'll notice there's one that's called Tubby's Picks. This is where Jay puts his, uh, his finds because he's got weird taste and he does it on purpose. I'm just saying, you know, he puts very, very weird and unique item in his section. Uh, then the tags. Okay, we're going to put ceramic cat. Okay, then we're going to put ceramic uh, cat figuring. 
Um, these are the tags, basically. If people are searching for something, vintage cat. Um, cat with music. Okay, a uh, musical cat. Vintage, collectible. I'm going to put vintage figure in. Okay, you get the idea, right? So you use whatever you think is relevant and you create those tags. Now the material is ceramic. Okay, that's it. Pricing. So how do I want to price those? Okay, never mind the fact that I paid 75 cents. Okay, remember this is a business. Okay, you spent the time to look for the item. You spent the uh, uh, gas mileage to look for the item. You bring the item home. You clean the item. You take pictures of the item. You spend time packing it. That item is no longer worth the 75 cents you paid for. Okay, so it is a business. People sell things like this. Uh, all the time. So if you find something and you got it for free and you sell it for $200, you're smart. Okay, I'm just saying. Because some people just feel like, well, damn, right? You pay 75 cents. Well, nothing you buy at the store is worth the amount you pay. And that includes your vegetables. Just saying. Um, so, hmm, how am I going to price this? I've looked at other people and what they sell similar items for very tiny ones for $22 one big one for $25 so I'm gonna go in that area I'm gonna put them for 25 because I've sold um, other figurines for about that price and it worked so I'm gonna do 25 despite the little chip because they are vintage and they're just cute and you got to take into factor the crazy cat ladies um, that's not a pejorative because I'm one of them <laughs> um, who buy collectible cats they have entire cabinets of cat stuff uh, anybody who collects cat figurines or who's a musical person these are attractive items they're not just random items they actually go into niches okay so I'm gonna put a price of $25 and we'll see what happens and they, they don't sell then I'll lower the price no big deal I just revised the listing and then you got to enter your shipping so I have here based on zip code so if somebody is in Los Angeles they're gonna pay a different price if they are in New York they're gonna pay a different price and if they are in Australia I've sent something to Australia already um, they'll pay a different price so based on zip code okay and this is where I enter the weight so the weight is one pound one ounce Okay, and then you remember I put the measurement on my box already, and that was 14 by 9.5, and the height is 4.5. Okay, now I got everything. So the shipping is automatically calculated. You see that for 1050 um, if you're in Chicago. If the person was in Los Angeles, it would be 1286. If the person was in Germany, it would be 2480. I give you an example. I sold my white terrain for forty dollars on Etsy, and the lady who bought it um, is in Luxembourg, and she was willing to pay eighty-four dollars to have my white terrain shipped to Luxembourg. So people, if they really want something, will pay for the shipping. I'm just saying, you know. Um, in the meantime, I am done with this listing. I'm just going to review it real quick and then all I have to do is click the publish button and it will be live online ready for somebody to buy it. I'm back. I'm in the bathroom. Um, I'm finally going to tackle the walls here. It's been what, two months now? <laughs> okay. So I still have the plaster on the walls for those of you who follow. Um, I need to sand today and I need to um, paint. I'm going to just paint. I thought about doing textured wall, wallpaper, you know, come on. This bathroom eventually is going to be completely redone down the line, you know, 10, 15 years from now. Uh, we're probably going to um, have the tub removed and put a real walk-in shower instead because let's face it we just don't take baths at all um i don't because knees you know scott doesn't and i don't know i just don't like baths anymore i just want to take a shower so um this is what i want to do today i want to show you something and this is a shameless product placement um i have a scale 
that was sent to me and I want to share that with you because it's pretty frightening. The wheat is frightening, it tells the truth and the truth you never like, right? But not only that, it's a scale that does so many features, um, it can really help you with a lot of things. Um, I'm in demand, am I not? <laughs> it just keeps on going. Okay, so this is my old scale, this is my Tanita, is that it? Uh, yeah, Tanita scale. Um, you know, I've had it for many, many years. It's pretty thick, it's heavy, it's a regular scale, and all it did for me was give me um, the truth and um, give me my uh, percentage of fat. Okay, but now there's new technology and there's new scales, so there's low profile scales. This one is an e -tech City scale, okay. And it's super sleek, it's glass, it's way lighter, okay, than the other one. But it also works with an app. And for those of you who have apps uh, on your phone or have a smartphone, you're going to appreciate that because it gives you, are you ready for this, right? These are, and I'm going to go on the scale and embarrass myself for the entire world to see. And quite frankly, I don't care. Um, because you guys have been watching me for so long. <laughs> You can tell my way by just looking at my face, okay? Very obviously, this is not the weight I want to be. Um, uh, losing weight right now is just, I'm too stressed, too worked out. I, I just, you know, maybe down the line, I don't know. Maybe I just give up. There is a possibility of that too. Because it's not like I don't see my goiter on camera, okay? It's not like I see my big fat cheeks on camera. I see it, I'm aware. Life, okay. Anyway, so what are the things that this scale will tell you? And my glasses are filthy. <laughs> um, it gives you your weight, obviously. It will give you your BMI, right? Uh, your body mass index. It will give you your body fat percentage. It will give you uh, the amount of, bo of body mass that is fat free. So it's basically... Uh, your your weight without the fat so it's the bones the flesh um your skin your muscles all of that it will give you your percentage of sub cutan sub oh okay hold on sub cutaneous fat okay it will give you your percentage of visceral fat okay that's the gut fat so if you no, nurses out there, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, I love you, nurses. If I, win, if I win the lottery tomorrow, I am stopping work and going to nursing school. And I want to be a trauma care nurse. That's what I would want to do. Anyway, um, it gives you the percentage of visceral fat, which is uh, your gut fat, I believe. And that's got to do with metabolic syndrome. You know how they say that if you're really fat in the middle, this is where, you know, you get all sorts of risks like cardiac risks and diabetes and all of this other stuff. It will give you your body water percentage. And this is what I really, really need to focus on because I have to be honest, I just opened this one. It's 1.30 in the afternoon, 1.33. This is my first sip of water. I've had nothing but coffee so far. Uh, it will give you your percentage of body, of bone mass. Very important for ladies up in age. Muscle mass percentage, protein percentage, BMR, okay, uh, and metabolic age. All right? And it's color coded. So if you're green, you're good. If you're orange, watch out. If you're red, yikes. Okay? Basically. So, and of course, it syncs with your phone. So what I'm gonna do is remove my socks. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. I've had breakfast and a snack. I've had zero water so far, and I'm also wearing clothes. So we're gonna take four pounds, just about. We'll take four pounds off the weight, all right? Let's go on it and see what happens. 186.8, all right? And we'll say we're gonna take four pounds out since I um, ate breakfast and some snacks. Let's take three, I guess, because I'm, uh, well, one and a half for clothes 
and then two pounds. Um, so I'm 183 something. So I've regained five pounds basically in the last whatever. I can't remember five five weeks, something like that. But the most important thing here is all of the other information. So according to the app, and they calculate by sending waves, I guess, um, through your body. 186.4, my BMI is 31, I'm in the red. My body fat is 44.3%, I'm in the red, okay. My fat-free body weight is 103 pounds, 6 ounces, I'm in the green. My subcutaneous, oh, I don't know how to say it, fat is 28%, I'm in the orange, so I need to watch out for that. Visceral fat is 11%, which is not bad, uh, which basically means that all my fat is in my face and my butt, okay. I'm 40.9% water and it's bad, well it's low, so I need to up my water intake. Um, I'm standard for fat-free body weight. I'm high for subcutaneous fat percentage, okay. Um, I'm in danger zone for BMI and body fat. Muscle mass is low, bone mass is low, protein 11.4% is low, BMR, um, which is basal metabolic rate, the amount of calories burned in one day while your body is at rest is within normal. I'm at 1479 and metabolic age 40. <laughs> So, um, anyway, so what do you do with this information? Okay, well, if you're trying to do your water intake and, and drink more water, um, this will give you a good indication as to how well you're doing, right? Hold on. This is so flat by now, it's almost water. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you what this looks like. Um, I'm going to put a link down below if you want to get something like this. I find it very helpful when I told my mom that I had a scale that was doing all of these features she actually asked me to purchase one um, and uh, give it to her the next time she comes over or next time I go over there uh, because she says that as an elderly this is important to her in particular the subcutaneous fat and the bone density the bone mass and the protein level I don't know how it calculates the protein but Anyway, it does calculate it. So you can get a graph, ups and downs, and then monitor all of that information. It's a good tool if you're really committed to losing weight or monitoring your weight gain, um, which I'm not there yet. So E-Tech City Scale. So I'm gonna let go of this one, um, and I'm gonna use this one moving forward in the bathroom. It was sent to me by the company. Thank you guys at eTech City for sending this to me. This is really something I need. And then tomorrow I'll talk about this one here that was sent to me as well. And there's a giveaway for it. Um, it's pretty cool too. So why am I here? I'm here to sand. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start with the area over there. I have my little sander right here. Uh, it hasn't been used in a while, you can tell. And if I get time, I will um, paint as well, which I'm probably gonna end up doing anyway. Um, the goal here for this bathroom is to put parquet floor, which I have found a full, but almost full. I think the guy took four planks out of it. Um, and so free, <laughs> I just have to install it. It's a dark mahogany, it's very pretty. And it's a click like type, but it's parquet, it's actual wood. Well, I think it's manufactured wood, I don't know. We'll look at it. Um, and I think I have enough to do this floor. It would be really, really cool. I would like that to have that instead of tile. Because tiles, they're cold, especially in the winter. It's cold in here in the winter. Uh, there's a heater, but it's not enough. Because remember, we're under the roof. Okay, let's start sanding. So for those of you who are new to the channel and didn't know, over here on this side there used to be a um, toilet paper holder and because this is shit rock, really the other side is the rest of the attic, I mean the uh, um, finished attic basically. Um, whatever I put on the wall, it just never stayed. So I had repaired that thing so many times. We went for this instead, which obviously needs to be refilled and guess what, it works much better. 
So what I'm gonna do, um, I don't know if you can tell, but there used to be, let me move that down a little bit. There used to be um, two holes here and I patched that, so I'm going to sand this. The goal is to make it as flat as possible and um, paint over. Yep, okay. So this is ready to be painted. But now, on the other side here, um, I had a whole set of shelves. Remember the shelves? And I finally got rid of them as part of my decluttering journey. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, by the way, the whole area over there, I don't know if I showed that, uh, where I had the little tray with, oh, I'll show it to you, hold on. I'm still using it, it's working. I have barely opened the other drawer where all my other junk is. All my makeup fits in this, I don't need anything else so far. It's working. How long has it been? Two months, maybe? So anyway, I used to have shelves here and the shelves used to have a ton of stuff on them. And I really decluttered. And I know some people think that I still have a lot of stuff, but guess what? For somebody like me who had shelves everywhere and boxes upon boxes and container upon container and a zillion things on display and everything and nothing, um, it's a huge improvement. So I'm going to sand this. Hopefully, um, I have the paint here. Hopefully this works out. I can just put a coat of paint and call it a day. smoothly I thought that I was gonna have to put a second layer of the stuff but now nah, it's uh, it's pretty good so I'm starting to paint um, I'm gonna start as always with the edges this is a bright white in gloss and the reason why I'm doing that because it's easier on bathrooms you can wash walls in particular with this bathroom my issue is the uh, lack of ventilation um, so if there is any kind of condensation or I start saying the pink stuff, you know what I'm talking about, um, I can just easily wash it because uh, I put a, um, the coat that I had before is a uh, mat. Uh, it's not a good choice for bathroom, okay? You need to get a gloss or semi-gloss. And that's one of the reasons why I opted out of getting wallpaper in here is the lack of ventilation. If I had a good system, then yeah, but I think I'm looking for trouble if I do um, wallpaper in here without ventilation. So uh, it looks like I'm going to paint the whole bathroom over. So I only did one coat, um, that's it, one coat and there's some areas where you can still see the difference in color underneath it, um, that's okay, it's going to change once I get the second coat. I didn't do the top here, I'm going to run out of paint if I do the top so I'm going to have to get more paint at some point. I did the baseboard and I did the bottom here and it's going to look much better once I get this grimy nasty tile I've always hated. I don't like these tiles at all. I've been debating for the longest what I was going to do with those tiles. I'm telling you, I'm going to cover them with the uh, floating parquet because uh, uh, you can do it and um, they're just ugly. I can't take it anymore. They're so ugly. Anyway, it's coming on three o'clock in the afternoon. I have to start editing. My hair is all messed up because of um, because uh, it's messed up. <laughs> it's the powder from the sanding. Um, 
it's three o'clock in the afternoon I'm gonna stop now because I have to edit this video at six o'clock I'm going out um, with Tubby and we're gonna do one town over which is I mentioned before is only once a month so that's when we get a lot of stuff um, from you know the trash basically um, so I'll film some of that but it's gonna be in tomorrow's video so until then I hope you enjoyed this I will talk to you later don't forget to check the link down below for that scale I mentioned check out the Etsy shop uh, for the items one of them that I posted is already gone um, it lasted maybe two hours on the site and <laughs> it's already gone uh, so thank you for that if you are one of my subscribers and I will see you tomorrow thanks for watching guys bye